I've had a bit of a noise issue for quite a while now at this uh, property and I've been uh, trying to get it sorted. If you remember back to a previous video, I actually got a handheld set on 80 meters AM with the squelch open and went around um, testing all my uh, appliances to see where the noise was coming from. And that search took me into the loft upstairs. I found that my VDSL internet cable seemed to be very noisy. Um, and the cable from the VDSL actually comes in from the front of the house, goes up the wall on the outside of the house, into the loft or attic as uh, the Americans would say, from one side of the loft to the other, and then back down the outside wall of, of the house in the back garden, and then into the living room where it connects to the router. Now, in my mind, that makes a very nice big loop antenna which A is going to radiate any interference that I'm going to get from the VDSL and also pick up interference from other appliances which isn't great so what I'd like to do and I'll have to get the um, internet service provider out to do this A because it's against the uh, conditions of my uh, contract with them to do it myself and B reading up online apparently you have to uh, if you change the length of that coax line, you have to get it rebalanced, which I wouldn't have a clue where to start, and I probably can't do that. You probably need access to the box outside. So uh, I'm not going to try that. I, I want to get my internet service provider out, see if they'll move the um, router from one side of the living room to the other, shorten that cable, and just go straight into the uh, front of the house. So we'd do away with that big loop through the attic and uh, over the house. So... That's what I want to do. Now, normally there's a £100 service charge for uh, moving the router, but if you can prove there's a fault, then uh, they can do it as a service repair. So I don't know whether that's going to work, but uh, what I've done is um, I picked up one of these um, SDR receivers. This is, uh, I actually cheaped out. Uh, this is uh, about 20 quid on uh, eBay and to be honest, the cheap ones, they're not all that. I don't think they've got much in terms of filtering inside them, if if any. Um, and you have to kind of butcher it a bit to make it work with the software. And there's features in the software that don't work very well or don't even work at all. So quite honestly, yeah, it kind of works, but I wouldn't bother with the cheap ones. I'd go straight in with the, this. Now, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but this is the SDR Play RSP1A. And I've actually been very impressed with this. Um, and I think it's got much better filtering. In, well, I know it's got filtering in because I looked at the uh, technical specs and it tells you what filters it's got in there. Um, it, it's actually a really nice receiver. Um, I think it's better than my uh, Yaesu FT857 easily. The 857 is a very noisy receiver, um, especially here. In, in an area like this. So what I've been doing recently is uh, using a loop antenna down the bottom of the garden on this uh, receiver um, and just receiving on that but using the 857 to transmit. Now if you're going to do that you need some kind of overload protection on the uh, on the SDR receiver otherwise you blow it up but that actually works really well. I'll show you that. That's that's a completely separate video. I'll show you that in another video. But the other thing you can do with this is there's a piece of software the RSGB recommend. There's a link on the RSGB website. And I'll, I'll try to uh, remember to include a link um, down below in the, uh, in the comments. But um, there's a piece of software you can download called Lolentos. Now what you do is you uh, record a sample of the spectrum and uh, feed that into the Lentos and it actually shows you whether you got VDSL interference. Now, I'm not going to show you the full process because other people have done that. Uh, Tech Minds, I think, on his channel, he did a very good video showing you how to do that. So, uh, again, I'll put a link to that video. But um, if I show you my laptop here on my screen capture, um, this is... A 10 megahertz of bandwidth uh, centered around 8.1 megahertz so 
Sensor 8.1 megahertz and 5 megahertz either side of 8.1 megahertz, so giving you 10 megahertz total. And um, what you're looking at is this bottom right chart here, and you can see you're looking for two uh, spikes that tie up. So two spikes together would indicate um, VDSL interference from one connection. So you can see here, I've got at least at least two connections here um, causing VDSL. So the first one here and the second one there, that, that's your first connection. And another one there and that one there. So spaced several megahertz apart. Um, if you can see where my cursor is, um, you've got a spike there and another one that looks very similar there. So that's at least three, plus another one to the left, four, and possibly another one there. So there's at least, I'm guessing interference from at least five VDSL connections here. Now, my own connection is probably one of these larger ones, and the next one is probably a neighbor, and all these small ones will be, I guess, neighboring houses a couple of doors down. So let's um, go to a slightly uh, higher resolution, I guess is the uh, right phrase to use. This is on uh, 160 meters, centered around 1.9 megahertz, but it's only two megahertz bandwidth. So it's a much narrower bandwidth, which sampling a smaller spectrum. And again, you can clearly see here that I've got two very large spikes. This is probably actually my own internet connection causing this and uh, there's another one there that looks like it matches up and a couple of other smaller ones here which probably aren't causing too much issue to be honest so the main one is this big one which like I say is probably my own connection and this uh, spike here so definitely got a problem on 160 meters this is 80 meters centered around 3.75 megahertz again two megahertz bandwidth and you can see here um, excuse the phone there two very large spikes and uh, most of this is ambient noise possibly a couple of uh, spikes that you could tie up maybe one there one there either you know to the right of the uh, large spikes so um, definitely an issue on 80 meters now if we go on to 60 meters, a couple of big spikes there, but I, I think most of this is just ambient noise. You might be able to correlate a couple of these spikes. If, if I'm honest, I don't tend to use 160 meters all that much. So uh, it's, uh, sorry, 60 meters all that much. So to me, probably not really that much of an issue. Um, go on to 40 meters again large spike there mostly ambient noise possibly a couple of uh, spikes maybe this one just before the big spike here you might be able to correlate and maybe another one here where my cursor is you might be able to uh, correlate those two so again definitely a problem on 40 meters now 30 meters is very interesting because 30 meters isn't actually too bad for me. And if you look here, again, along the bottom, it's fairly quiet. But I do have two big spikes here, um, a couple of smaller ones here, and again, maybe a couple of really small ones here, which probably aren't causing too much of an issue, to be honest. So again, you can clearly see some VDSL there. And 20 meters, um, it's mostly ambient noise. Can you correlate a couple of these spikes here? Maybe. So I think the way to deal with this is I think most of the noise is actually coming from my own internet connection. There's definitely um, interference from neighbouring properties, but I think the big one is from my own internet connection. So I think the approach I'm going to take here, I'm going to go to my internet service provider and ask them 
you know, if I go with these ch charts and say there's a fault there, I'm hoping they'll uh, move the router free of charge and the waiver this £100 service charge because it's a fault rather than the service request, if that makes sense. Now, whether or not they'll do it, I don't know. It's got to be worth a try. And also, the RSGB recommend off, uh, reporting interference like this to Ofcom as well. So, I think I'm going to report the interference from the neighbouring properties to Ofcom and um, copy in the RSGB because they say they, the RSGB like to keep track of it and, uh, you know, keep track how many people have actually reported interference. But also, if I go to my own internet service provider, see if they'll move the uh, router and see if I can uh, get rid of the two, you know, some of the big spikes which are coming from my own internet connection. So I think that's my plan of action and uh, I sent an update video on this. Maybe, uh, I don't know how long it'll take. This could take a few months to uh, to progress. So that's why I'm at, at the moment. I'll, uh, I'll make an update video probably a couple of months down the line and uh, let you know how I get on.